Chan Dad, Chan Nan, Shina Zak, Shina Zonj Ba, Zak Nela Aza Ba Zonne Diyuz Na Balash Te Yewtu, Ruwa Pa Diyuz Ra Te Yewtu, Ruwa Pa Diyuz Spengola, Matsegun, Trek Contrer. Please receive greetings from an ancient uh, ancestral village, Teotitlan del Valle, the place of gods. A place that's, that's called the, cult, uh, the rich culture and the great civilization of the Zapotec people. My name is Porfirio Gutierrez. I'm a descendant of many generations of Zapotec weavers from Teotitlan del Valle, Oaxaca, Mexico. Teotitlan del Valle is located in the state of Oaxaca, and it's about 200 miles to the southeast of Mexico City, and we are in a region called the Central Valley. My village, Teotitlan del Valle, believes to be the first Zapotec city to be founded. For, for over a millennium, we have known for our fine weavings. Today, about 75% of population are still involved in some aspect on the weaving. Sadly, we are the last few families in my tribe that still have the knowledge of working with plants, minerals and insects, and hand spun yarn. My family and I believe that this art form, it is important to keep it alive and we are committed to do so. The Zapotec series, Mitla and Monte Alban, dates back to 400 BC and are the two most important archaeologic sites in our area. The Zapotec people believe that their forefathers came from the clouds. That's why they refer themselves as people from the clouds. Two thousand five hundred years ago, the Zapotec culture was one of the most advanced in the New World. They had developed a writing system, mathematics, a calendar, many arts, including ceramics, sculpture, and textiles. These are some of the materials and methods my ancestor was using to create their, their weaving. For weaving material, they were using agave fiber cotton, and boot, uh, bird feathers. To weave, they were using a backstrap loom, just like you see on the um, um, right low corner. That's the uh, backstrap tension loom. The agave plant, you see on the top left, and uh, the top right, you see how the fiber's being uh, treated. And then on the far left, you also see the um, plants, minerals, and insects that they were using. Our weaving tradition has had some changes and influences. In the 16th century, the Spanish brought churro ship wool, the spinning wheel, carding pedals, and the upright looms. There you see my mother carding the wool, the spinning wheel, and an upright loom. This is a traditional weaving as we have done for several hundred years. The symbols and plant dyes are much older. I respect our traditions, traditional symbols, the plant dyes, and the tools of my ancestors. Like any other artist uses their media to express themselves, a writer, singer, a dancer, use their own media to express themselves and their feelings. I use textiles. I started weaving when I was 12 years old, and, it, and I was 18. I started to understanding more about my work and how this work could be expressed. Start looking at, looking at it more as an art form. This is some of the examples and personal expression I have within my tradition. These designs are results of a constant conversation and imagination, the way that my ancestors overview their universe and the way I overview the universe in the modern world I'm part of today. Looking at the NMAI's archive, I hope to see when the chemical dyes were introduced in my village 
And if the natural dye we use today, we're also using the old pieces as well as the symbols. Here's what I found. The pieces I saw that were made between the early 1800s and the mid 1900s, the natural dyes, I was surprised to see that some of the pieces I acquired in the 1920s seem to be made out of synthetic dyes. But I also saw many pieces that were made with natural dyes. I was also surprised to see only four elements of natural dyes was used in these old pieces compared to the 10 element we use today. The old pieces were dyed with Anil, Maimba, Pericon, Lugiag, Indigo, Cochineo insect, Tarragon, and Tree Moss. The rest of the palette were over dyes and they were also using natural sheep color. Weaving techniques, the older pieces were, the thread count was between 12 to 16 per inch, much finer than what my village is doing today. The other difference was the two pieces were made in a much narrow loom up into the 1850s. As you can see here on the right side, the seam of the two pieces, since the loom was were much narrower at that point, there were, only, there were uh, about two and a half feet wide, made with three feet uh, max. So two pieces has to be woven separate time, and where they're united and seamed together has to be matched. Very respectful for the kind of work that they did. And the other picture, I wanted to show detail of some of the dyes that I, I mentioned that I found, which is the cochineal insect, indigo, tarragon, and natural sheep color, as well as tree moss. The symbol, the symbol I found on these pieces, old pieces, uh, they were uh, similar, and but many, many of these pieces had influence from the Euro Europeans. The materials, it's the same, similar what we're using today, wool and cotton, although some of these older pieces were 100% were wool. The title of my community project, it's Reviving Traditional Zapotec Dye Techniques. This project I intend to do, with this project I intend to share our knowledge and wisdom through a four day natural dye workshop. This program I hope to teach my community to use plant dyes and perhaps join me in my um, effort to preserve this ancient technique. I wish I had more time to share with you the gr how gratifying it is to work with, in harmony with nature to create beautiful things. I hope you share my belief that an art form that has more than 2,000 2, years of history, it becomes a deep part of our identity. Keeping an art form alive through it, it's true to its roots, nature's our soul, and self-respect. Self-respect to us and my ancestors that through each piece we create, we honor them through the elements, through the symbolic elements, through the methods that they use. I just try to imagine sometime how my ancestors came to investigate and how long it took them to find out that this insect would provide a dye red, or red dye, I'm sorry. And now when the um, Europeans uh, show, show to Mexico, they found that this insect was such a valuable, valuable because there was no dye, anything that would give red at that point, and that's how it was, it was largely exported to Europe. That kind of work, it's, that's what I'm honoring today. Keeping an art form alive and true to its root, nature's our soul, and respect to ourselves, as I mentioned, my family and I are so proud to be part of Master Zapotec Weavers. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias a todos. Estoy sin ni